Hi, I'm Mark Stoudemire, host and creator of Get to the Joke, a web series that is a master class in the art of stand-up comedy. I hope you find today's episode to be both fun and helpful, and you can help me out by subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking the video, and feel free to drop a comment, I'll be happy to get back to you. Alright, well let's get to the joke. I'm Mark Stoudemire, a comedian from Philadelphia. As you can probably imagine, I have much going on uh, right now. Uh, I can tell you the most exciting thing I had going on this week was my buddy called me up. He was like, hey Mark, found this cat outside. So I neutered him, gave him his shots, and I rushed this cat. You want to come over and see my cat? So I got nothing better to do. I'll like 45 minutes to come see this cat. Showed this guy's house, cat's not even there. So dude, where's this cat goes? Oh, it's an outdoor cat. <laughs> outdoor cat? Let me get this straight, fella. You found a cat outside, cut its balls off, and put it right back outside. <laughs> Seems like a pretty raw deal for that cat. <laughs> Story has another turn. This guy has two other cats. They're both house cats. Not house with outdoor cat deals. Like, oh, outdoor cat, don't be coming in here. See all this food and air conditioning and love? That's not for you. You can't run back outside, you outside cat. Now I know how Cooper Manning feels. Nobody. All right. For those who don't know, Cooper Manning is Eli and Peyton Manning's other brother. <laughs> There's a reason you never heard about Cooper Manning, because nobody cares about Cooper Manning. He's an outdoor cat. <laughs> And our guest today is Chris Dolan, probably the comic I have the most admiration for. I've known Chris since day one of doing stand-up. Uh, we both would do an open mic out in Doylestown, and we've been great friends uh, ever since. Um, I, uh, I adore Chris so much. Uh, he is the genius behind the great website, uh, HiChrisDolan.com. Uh, which we talk about here, and you should definitely be a fan of at the end of this uh, episode. Uh, he is also the co-producer of uh, the uh, Suburban Comedy Showcase, uh, and he's also the winner of the WMGK Radio uh, Contest for Funniest Person. Chris is just an absolute delight. I had so much... Fun's not really the right word. I just learned so much about Chris and from Chris from this episode. Probably the biggest bombshell that ever got dropped in one of these interviews happens in this episode. So I hope everyone finds a takeaway here. Uh, and without further ado, let's get to the episode. My, uh, my wife and I have been married 20 years this year. Um, thank you. Um, but no kids. Uh, I kind of feel like not having kids is the one gift that I could give back to society. <laughs> I kind of wish more people felt the way that I did. <laughs> I mean, look at me. Like, does the world really need another pasty-faced, sarcastic Irish guy that drinks too much? And I was like, yeah, get working, man, we're almost out of you, mix. <laughs> But, uh, but I like kids. Uh, I especially like meeting young, family-minded couples uh, because occasionally they'll do my favorite thing in the world, uh, and that's when they use the word trying as a euphemism for fucking. <laughs> like you'll go to a cocktail party or something, and you'll meet this couple, and you'll be like, so how long have you been married? And they'll be like, oh, three years. You're like, oh, you thinking of having kids? They're like, we're trying. <laughs> 
we're having monotonous, unprotected, married sex again and again and again and again and again and again. We're trying. So that we can have a kid, go broke, and hate each other. We're trying. Usually that's where the conversation ends, um, but I like to ask follow-up questions. So, you trying hard? Did you try today? And my favorite, can I try? Chris Dolan. Hey! Hey! What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good. Are we live here? Yes, yes. Fine. No, I appreciate you doing this. I, I, this was something I've been kicking around for a little bit. I don't know it's just because I've been bored to tears and, and now like I have nothing else. I have no outlet. I was like, well, let me do this idea here. Or I talk yeah, to some not? of my favorite my favorite comedians, like people that um, I've known for a while, respect what they do, and see like I'm just interested in how you guys write jokes, like how you get your material okay. and develop it. I think a lot of that has to do with background experience too, like what you guys like have been through. Like, I was, well, first of all, are you guys doing how's everything going? Coronavirus? -y? Are oh, you guys we're, going out? We're fine. Okay. I mean, this is not that dissimilar to the life that I've been living for the last couple of years. <laughs> but you're going out, right? I mean, I see you with Lancer, so you guys are... Like, yeah, you guys we're, are... Go we're golfing. Um, I play golf. I don't know if you've ever met Steve George or Tom Connors. So, yeah, we're getting, you know, I'm getting out and, you know, seeing people and stuff. But, Is it uh, serious for you? Is it, like, social... Are you going to no. be like, no, so you're just like, I will do my best at social distance. I'll do my best to wear a mask, but I'm not going to, like, be religious about it. Oh, I thought you meant his golf series. No, 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 I meant, oh, I meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, this, no, I, I'm pretty uh, disciplined about, um, in fact, I just canceled a haircut. <laughs> <'cause>, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's just too yeah. risky. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not in a, I'm not in an urgent hurry to, to get out and, and, uh, you know, to hang with, uh, it, it's not, I miss people, but it's, yeah. you know, I, I want to be, um, uh, respectful, smart about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you done a live show or will you do a live show? Um, probably not. Okay. Um, I, uh, cause all the ones that I see that are happening are, are, are outdoors and, and, and I know you guys can do it right. But, um, <laughs> I don't know about uh, that. Well, <laughs> I, you, we have achieved a successful show to, together outdoors. Um, and, but I, I don't want to produce an outdoor show, and, and I don't necessarily feel that I have to do anything right okay. now. So I want to, but I, I want traditional shows, and, and I'm willing to wait. Um, okay. See how that goes. All right, cool, man. Well, so I just want to get off first, like, um, with like, you know, a lot of this stuff, I guess, come from my own experiences, and it may be not similar to yours, but like, was there like a fat? Do you know when like a fascination with stand up happened in your life? I, I listened to um, like, got Bill Cosby records yeah. when uh, <laughs> when I was younger, and and uh, I'm trying to think, and and just seeing comedy on uh, you know variety shows uh, of the era, um, but I never thought about doing it. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I, um, I just, uh, I just enjoyed it, uh, for what it was and never even contemplated, uh, for, you know, trying it out myself until years, until, I don't know, 2008 or okay. something. But did um, you go to comedy clubs? Were you like seeking out comedy at like a younger age or college or? No. Okay. Not a lot. I mean, the, I think what, what kind of got me back into comedy again was like as a as an adult was um i saw pat oswalt do panel for one of his early albums on conan mm -hmm. and and i would also watch the king of queens you know now and again and 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 see him on there but he 
the panel discussion that he did was this bit about um, 80s hair metal bands and, and the videos being in like a smoke factory and, <laughs> and, uh, and I laughed and laughed and, and, and so I just said to Aaron, you know, this is some guy we you know, should probably go see and, and at the time he wasn't performing in Pennsylvania because he had a bad experience um, with, a, with a George Bush like crowd I think or something. So, um, so we actually went to the improv in Washington DC uh, to see him one night and then we went to a, a Phillies Nationals game you know the next night and made a weekend out of it and and, uh, and and his performance you know which is pretty much just like the feeling kind of Patton album yeah uh, was just the, just the funniest club set I've ever seen and 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 ever, ever will see oh wow oh okay so, but um, that, okay, that's cool because I, I didn't know you, I didn't know you were a Patton Oswalt fan. I never yeah, think you ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but, yeah. but so when did you know you were funny? Like I mean, like I, I don't think two thousand eight you just became funny. Was it like? No, I know you came from a large no, family. Was that a way for yeah, you to I kind of separate? A lot of it, yeah, because my older brothers and sisters would be funny at you know the dinner table and just being around and and. There wasn't much a competition. Um, it was just kind of an admiration for you know for them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting laughs and and made you want to kind of be a part of the conversation <laughs> um, in uh, in that way. And and what was weird, is, like throughout the years, like having a bunch of different you know dopey corporate jobs is is <laughs> I, I would always either send you know, cynical responses or, or stupid <laughs> responses to, to emails. Yeah. And, um, and the nicest compliments that I've ever gotten were for people that would see me or, or we, we'd reconnect later and they'd say that they kept the emails because <laughs> I, um, funny in that way. And, 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 um, and I would incorporate into, you know, PowerPoint presentations and stuff like that. But again, never putting two and two together that, you know, maybe, telling jokes to a to an audience but so uh, what got you over the hump what got you from being interested what got you from being funny as a kid the bill cosby seeing Patton oswald what was like yeah. i gotta get up on stage and see if i'm good at this well as an adult i i started uh, a google doc with jokes and okay. and i started writing jokes and i probably contributed to that google doc for oof, um years uh, I, I still have a, a printout of it around here somewhere I should have grabbed it and uh, uh, but you know I could always do that some other time um, and, and I just had all these jokes and, and, and ideas for jokes that I had and, and, and nothing to do with them and uh, and then helium opened up in 2007 or 2008 or whatever it was and um, and and Aaron said well maybe you should you know think about trying out an open mic and, and it almost felt like she was crossing a boundary and I kind of got like my back up a little bit, like saying, well, I don't know if I, I you know, want to do that. And, and I was kind of a jerk about it, which, which I regret and, and, and apologize for. Um, but uh, I just was, this is how stupid I was. I, I didn't, I, I thought you had to be like good already. Mm -hmm. Before you went to an open mic. <laughs> <laughs> all what you learned throughout the year. <laughs> exactly. Every all the anecdotes in the interim from then till now have taught me the exact opposite. <laughs> but um, so I signed up for the for the stand up class and 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 did that and and had a you know with terrible material you know did okay and um, and so then. Then I did it for, and this is another dumb thing. I, I, I didn't really even think about like paid shows or stuff like that. <laughs> All there was, was, was contests, you know, like, yes. so I would just write material for the sake of prepping it for like a, a fucking contest, you know, like that <laughs> the end game. <laughs> and shit and in the contest and then like, Oh, I guess comedy's not for me. <laughs> um, well, so I, I want to go back. So, um, you know, you talked about that being, you know, how many, how many siblings do you have? It's like an ungodly number, like eight? I'm one of ten. One of um, ten, okay. Yeah. Now, I always want to ask you, the jokes that you tell, since I've, since I've been hearing your jokes now since I started, which has just been awesome because you're such a, a talented writer, 
Right. What are they based on? Exper- real experiences that you've had or experiences that you observed? And I'm going to get into that a little bit based on your answers, Bike the Engineer. Uh, boy, that's a good one. I, I think they're more stuff that I've observed than stuff that uh, that I've had happen, mainly because I don't... <laughs> I don't do all that much. <laughs> well, no, it's not, that's definitely not true. You you probably have your catalog of jokes has has to be insane, especially now that you're writing daily, which I'm going to get into down the road. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to do somewhat of a chronological order, and then I want to yeah. talk about the clips that you sent to me. I also have some of my yeah. favorite clips that I want to talk about as well. But so I remember you you were, you told a joke about you know a priest and a molestation and the prom yeah. is that true is that based on a true experience or is that just... yeah that, that, that's true that is that true. Is true oh yeah, wow I, I was, are I you comfortable talking problem. about that because that's crazy huh? is there, are you comfortable talking about that is that your way of yeah, getting yeah, it out I'm there okay, about it. okay yeah, so to, to walk so is, so is that you telling that joke is that about as Getting getting that out there to tell your story, or have you been to therapy? Have you told other people? Because I didn't know that was true because it's such a great joke, and it's almost <laughs> just the premise. It doesn't you don't there's you you kind of the joke doesn't have a lot of emotion in it. It's just yeah. like it could just be you know just because there's been a, just a, a long history of that happening with the Catholic Church. So yeah. so tell me about that joke and 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 do you do that joke anymore? I haven't heard that in a long time. Yeah, I haven't told it in a while because I think it's a, um, hmm, there's a, there's certain biases in audiences about that, you know, and, and, uh, and, and people with deep, (laughs) uh, Catholic convictions, um, tend not to find it very funny. But do they not believe you? Is that, is that it? Or I don't think it's about believing me or not. Um, I, you know, they may have the same question you did, whether it's born out of a, you know, a real experience and it is, um, but they just don't like being confronted with that kind of, interesting. Uh, yeah, that, that harsh reality, um, in an, in an escapist, uh, sort of thing. So, but knowing you as well as I think I know you, you are, you are one of the nicest comics out there, but I would say you're probably one of the most unapologetic comics out there. Like you don't, you have, you know, you are not going to, you're going to tell your jokes and yes, the audience feedback is important, but it's, it's doesn't, it doesn't dictate whether if I know you as well as I think I do, if the joke does well and the joke that you believe in, which I'm, I, I honestly thought when I asked you that question, you were going to say no, that that was just, but so I'm, I'm almost, floored to hear about this and i want to talk a little bit about that if you're if you're okay with doing yeah, so sure. um but mm-hmm. it, i what, what that, I guess my question is um will will you keep telling that joke just because that's hey this is my story this is my almost like how richard Pryor tells his jokes or, or george carlin yeah. or even like a bill cosby on a more lighter note um mm-hmm. are you is that a joke that you would tell like in a headline set versus maybe like a five minute set or do you just take that out of the whole repertoire all, repertoire all together no i think i it, i mean i've told it in you know when i'm lucky enough to get you know 20 minutes or, or you know or more than 20 minutes mm-hmm. then um you know i'll tell it then and and uh and again one of the one of the times in memory <laughs> that I, I i did tell it was uh was at this uh Footlighters Theater in yes. Meteor yep. something, and it and it was a definite crater in <laughs> in, in that stuff. Um, <laughs> that, does that make you upset that that's your story no. and people have such a hard line with it? No, it it, it doesn't. Um, it, it it upsets me that the joke doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't. Upset, it, it doesn't make me mad at them for for not. Uh, for not laughing at it. I mean, and again, it's a, I'm not a real good room reader. You know, when, when you say unapologetic, I mean, I think one way of me sort of reframing that is I'm going to go in, you know, with a, with a game plan and a set list Mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily really want to, or, or, or feel like I am going to deviate from that list. Um, But what I've started to do is, is because I don't have a very good memory, bring a more, uh, comprehensive inventory uh, out with me, so there's the list, 
and then if I can sense maybe that people aren't, um, uh, if I can anticipate that I don't think there's something they're going to like, then I could look and, and remember a different thing Interesting. Uh, that might make them uh, a bit more comfortable. Okay, so let's dive into that joke then. Was that a joke that when you started doing comedy and you just were like, I need some ideas to come up with, let me go back to some painful things, have my, let me like dig, or did that mm-hmm. joke come later as you matured as a comedian? Like, so you started in 08, that's been 12 yeah. years now. Is this an early joke? Like, I just need to tell us out there and get it out there. No, it was a, it was a, it was a later joke. Um, thank goodness. <laughs> I mean, because I don't, I would have uh, uh, approached it as um, as well as well to the extent that I did. Uh, I don't think I would have done as well with it um, earlier on. Okay. I mean, you know, in my, uh, I don't know, cavalcade of you know fat jokes and, and pun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that have all been, you know, dumped. Um, but yeah, no, I, I can't recall when um, I thought to. Uh, I, I think it was a. It, it, I write a lot about death, which I don't know why I do. I just, well, I have some just, of that in here too, but um, yeah. I'm going to talk about your mom because you've a joke about the, the cards yep. and your mom. So, um, but yep. before we get to that, yeah, I want to hear more about this joke and kind of your mindset as far as like getting it in here on here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't have very complete memory of, of how I, you know, got that joke out or, or decided to get it out. And, uh, um, trying to remember where I worked it out, but I put it in a, when I used to enter Philly's funniest back mm-hmm. the contest, um, it, it, it made it into a, you know, a set there and it did pretty well uh, for a while, but then it would have some of these uh, downer experiences, which I don't know how much to attribute to, you know, to me um, and, uh, and, and how much to attribute to the audience. So I, um, it was, it was when I was trying to get a joke out about um, like my mom dying, like mm-hmm. the, the, the car joke and, 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 uh, and just how crestfallen she would have been, you know, to find out what was was going on. So I think it was really more reminiscing about uh, my mom for the purposes of that joke that sort of drew this other thing out and and seemed like there was a a way to piece them together. I mean, okay. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. No, it does. Um, it does actually make sense. Is, are those jokes important to you? It's it's a way to, you know, like you have. I mean, you have. You're probably you're probably one of the most dynamic comics as far as like there's really I can't really put you in a style. You're not observational. You're not really a storyteller. You don't. You're not really a, a, like a social commenter only. You're like a variety of all those, which is like a really unique skill because I can't do. I try to be observational, and I'm not. I'm mediocre at that. I can't even think about doing like the other kind of jokes. But with you, you. But with you, you you you, you kind of had this whole like pot of of uh, different genres and jokes. But how important is it that you have these real experiences? I mean, how many comedians have had what you had? Uh, you know, a young. Uh, uh, you know, your mom died when you were young. You were molested. Uh, I don't know if there's other things that you're just, that haven't been um, joked. Let me interject that the okay. one fiction in that whole thing is I wasn't all that young when my mom died. Oh, okay. It, it, better, it just better suits. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the, the the joke. So I'm sorry. That's okay. But is it important to you that these are jokes? I mean, that you get to tell because that's who you are. When years from when, whenever you're not around anymore, and these jokes will live on YouTube or whatever, is it important that those yeah. are the jokes that people single out versus maybe a joke about like slushies or anything like that no i really it, it's not a uh you know it, it's not a compelling live your truth mm-hmm. sort of thing i mean you, you know there are people who have you know had more on experiences you know either positive or negative than you know than mine have been and and, and if and if that's their motivation and in, in, in telling that stuff then then more power to them uh for me, I just wanted to to, to try it out, and, and and I don't really share all that much. I'm getting better at it mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, about uh, um, personal experience and and you know my station in life, mm-hmm. uh, such as it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like telling more jokes about being you know a 57 year old guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, which uh, 
um, you know, I think I tended to shy away from, but, but now it's, it's, you know, it's, it's comfortable. Yeah. And, and um, to, you know, to talk about and fun mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, I'm not fooling anybody. So <laughs> Fuck I, might well get, <laughs> I might as well just put it out there. <laughs> did, did your family, did your family, uh, now my question is, did your family find out about these experiences to you for the first time hearing those jokes? Like, was this, the people who didn't so, know about it, like friends, family, other comedians yeah. in Philadelphia, like, okay. Yeah, I didn't really, uh, I, I will, one comic, and I, and I won't say who it was, yeah. but, but they heard me tell it and, and um, asked if it was true, and I said, yeah, and then that person sort of said to me, yeah, you know, I had, you know, something similar um, happen to me. And, and so there was kind of an unexpected uh, connection with that person from this unfortunate um, yeah. share um, experience. But yeah, I, I, I didn't really, I didn't tell my brothers and sisters. I didn't, uh, um, you know, tell, uh, you know, my parents. I, I mean, it, I mean, I don't want to um, grade eight this stuff, but I tend to think that, you know, my experience wasn't as bad as, you know, some of the other stuff. I don't stuff know if you can say I, it. I mean, it still happened to you. Like, I don't know if you can. I know. Yeah. I know. It's still. Um, but, um, but, you know, thank goodness it, yeah. it, it wasn't any worse than it, than it was. And, and, and again, this is a guy that went on to work in other mm -hmm. uh, parishes or whatever. And, and uh, I think some guy self-published a book about his experience with, uh, with this particular um, uh, priest, and you know, and, and he, you know, he's now dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank God. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, your joke, it's the joke is you say Father Tom. Is that his real name, or do you protect yeah, him by changing the name? name? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, wow. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that, thank you for sharing that. That's, I mean, oh, it's, no. it is, so all this stuff that has happened to you, so you've had, uh, I mean, there's a lot of pain. I mean, a lot. I mean, a lot of that stuff is. I can't even comprehend. I'm none of that really happened. I mean, there's been abuse of, in my life, but nothing on that end. Nothing's extreme as that end. So it's like, yep. I'm, so I'm trying to wrap my head around. Well, how do you? How, I mean, it's it's almost like you effortlessly just wrote a joke and shared it. But how much did you? I mean, I know you said you didn't have a great memory about the formation of that joke, but was it a? I mean. Mm -hmm. Was it a struggle? Was this the only, was this something like that you've been wanting to get out there, but you felt like therapy wasn't good? I can't go to my parents, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to write this, this minute 30 joke about this prom and the father and that kind of stuff. Are you going to, is that, is, is that like, is that pain, was that painful for you to write down? And that's something that you no. had? Okay. It, no, and, and, and I don't mean that to, to, to diminish others' mm -hmm. experience, um, or even my own, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, uh, it, it's, it, it, it's really just time, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, you know, having something, you know, be, be distant enough and, and, and sort of, you know, the way that you process, process experiences, um, when you get older and, and, uh, and more, uh, you know, further away from them, you know, that you can, uh, joke about it, you and know, and, and, and. And again, going back to our, you know, earlier conversation and, and respect that there are people that, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reasons don't want to hear a yeah. joke about it. And, yeah. um, and, and I've got to be prepared to, you know, to, to, to deal with the fallout if, uh, you know, if it doesn't land, which in the grand scheme of things is yeah. a what. I mean, it's a great joke. It really is. And now I, that I know it's real, it makes it even like a much better joke than, oh, thanks. yeah. <laughs> I mean, not that I'm not trying to like. Oh, it's funny that that happened, but it's you give like... me the courage to go out and try it again. <laughs> well, so let, well, let's say so. Let's say you you never molested. Your mother never died. Do you get on stage and tell jokes, or is that sure. life changing? Are those th these events no, that, life changing? That uh, no, that 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 wasn't it. I okay. Mean, um, it was uh, you know I, I I would still tell jokes. I just wouldn't have. You know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just not that one. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So, so your your mom died. Now you said you weren't young. How old were you when your mom died? Oh, I was in my thirties. Okay, I mean, still, it's you know, it's you know, still mm -hmm. maybe was it unexpected? Was it a sub like do you? No, it was uh, uh, Alzheimer's uh, oh, complication. Oh, so that's pretty rough in itself. 
Did she did yeah. you visit with her to the end, or was it too hard to just be around someone like someone that's close to your mom with all No, I was actually um, I was traveling at the at the very end and and, and wasn't able to get back in time. Oh, geez. Um, uh, but uh, eh. so, so do you, now, is there material with this stuff happening? Is there material you won't touch? Will you make? Will there is everything on the table for you, or are there? If you can joke about your mother dying, maybe you don't talk about the all power, but you talk about your mom dying, or you mm-hmm. talk about yeah. uh, the priest and the molestation. Are there things that you won't touch? Like, hey, I thought this great joke, but I'm 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 staying out of it. I'm I'm just gonna give to somebody. I'm not. This is off the table for me. No, I, I don't think. I mean, the thing I don't really tell a lot of political jokes because I don't feel that I have anything profound mm-hmm. to, to to add to the discussion. If I if that changes and, and, and I feel that maybe there is, um, then I try it. But, uh, but I think, you know, to the extent that I have a, you know, a voice, uh, sort of solidified or, or, or kind of defined, um, I don't think it really fits all that great in, in, in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, okay. I, I, anyway, no, that's fine. I, I was just curious. Um, so I, one thing I did notice was, so you, so you're 57, and I don't know mm-hmm. if there, I get a sense that your age might be touchy. I know I get a little bit, I mean, I'm going to be 35, and I know, like, sometimes if I'm in the room, and they're, like, for instance, I did Philly's Funniest this in 2019, mm-hmm. and yep. I lost to three guys in their young, or early to mid-20s. I felt I felt very cognizant of my age. I felt very like, yeah. I, I why am I not? I mean, I understand Philly's funny. Some people have their biases, but like, even though mm-hmm. I tried to like don't care, you know go for fun, I do care about it for some reason. Um, yeah. Uh, I am you know nothing makes me more cognizant than when I see people who are are fifteen years younger than me that are killing it. They're getting they're getting booked yeah. for headlining spots or they're doing bigger clubs. Mm-hmm. Are is that something that gets into your head at all? Or okay, I know you said recently you no, said you become more anymore. comfortable I mean, with talking. It, well, let me let me take that back a little bit. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, you know, part of the reason you know that I started running shows is is you know to put myself uh, I on the show. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, and and so there's that, and and uh, to the extent that there is any kind of you know ageism in terms of not for contests so much, but who mm-hmm. gets picked or who who doesn't, you know, for a bill. Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of trust that if you're running a show, um, not so much at a big comedy club, but if you're an independent show producer, you know, in a city, you know who your audience is mm-hmm. and you know who you think is going to connect with that audience. And if it's not me, then fine. Okay. Um, but, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, it ends up being a little bit of a vindication of sorts that, you know, you can put together a, a, a lineup um, that has me on it and, and has younger, more talented comics, and 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 I, you know, if I can hold my own, then then that's then that's fine. And 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 you know, and when people ask me to, you know, like thank thank you again, you know, um, like ask me to do their things, then you know that's that's nice too. Um, I was very touchy about my age and in fact i got into a bit of a sniping uh thing on social media years and years ago that i just feel horrible about um and and, and apologize for um it, it's one thing to make fun of yourself about it you know if you're being uh sort of uh sniped at um because of it then then that's it, it, it's generally not fun. I think it's it can be fun depending on who it's coming from. Yeah. And then you respect that person enough, you know, as as a as a decent individual, um, uh, to you know to take it and, and reciprocate. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, I I wish I started years and years ago, but I just never put two and two together to to think that I could tell jokes and and entertain people any other way than through powerpoints or or, or emails or uh you know other dopey shit <laughs> well do, do you think you'd be as good as you are now had you started 20 years ago yeah okay. yeah you think you'd be better yeah okay 
Yeah, because I, yeah, um, you know, all that, um, all that time and experience, I think, would, you know, can't be, you know, dismissed. And I want to, so I want to ask then, um, so we go back to the age and I, I reading your website, highchrisdolan.com, in the about yep. section, you write, um, I am not a clean comic. I'm not a dad comic. I don't do wife jokes. I felt like there's mm-hmm. there's an anger there. There's like, oh, I'm being sure. stereotyped because of mm-hmm. the way I look. And so, is have there's been experience? Like, there's a reason you wrote that in there. Was there experience where somebody reached out to you, like, hey, I'm, or I was disappointed that you weren't doing enough, like, I hate my wife kind of jokes, or yeah. <laughs> 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 um, it's a I think it's just a hmm, trying to find a nice way to say this. I think it's it's a it's a rejection of what a lot of people my age lean on, and 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 that I that I don't get a huge kick out of mm-hmm. seeing. So yeah. um, I think that that's probably it uh, more than anything else. Um, it's like you know, it, it, it's just all. Uh, you know, corny household anecdotes, <laughs> which, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, and and I, I don't want to, I don't want to do that stuff. <laughs> so I want to, I want to go into your running routine and kind of backwards in the fact that I want to talk about your delivery because you have a very unique style of delivering a joke, which is, are you playing? Is it? Are you playing a character? Because when you deliver a joke, you're calm. You're cool, collected, mm-hmm. you're deliberate when you speak, you articulate, there's pauses, there's not a rush. It doesn't matter if you're in a bar kind of venue or if you're in a, you know, a grand opera house kind of venue. There is a style yeah. where it's, I'm going at my speed, you're either going to get on board or I don't care what really happens. So is that yeah. kind of, is, is that a character that you play? Because that's not how I know you off stage as far as like this. No, it's not. It's just a, it's just a frame of mind, really. Um, and when I first started out, I was really rushing everything, you know, to the point where I, it's, it's like I wanted to say it so quickly because I was worried if I didn't say it fast enough, I'd forget it in the, in the elapsed time that I was taking to say it. And, uh, so now I think it's, it's just about, um, taking my time and, and, uh, and I guess it's just, it, 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 it's more a way of enjoying myself when I'm, when I'm up there, it might not look it. (laughs) But, uh, I've had, you know, in the, in the backhanded compliment department, um, I've had more people that I can, you know, say that, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're a better writer than you are a, a performer, um, to me. And, and, and so it's all right, I get it. You know, I, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna, um, you know, I'm not gonna bury the stage presence meter. Um, I, I don't, for, I don't believe that. I think you're a great performer. <laughs> I'm actually somewhat jealous of how you are able, because I get in situations where let's say it's like a bar show and the yeah. TVs mm-hmm. are on. And now I'm like scream. My my voice is loud naturally, and now I'm like screaming yeah. on the microphone. People are not enjoying it. I'm trying to like look for any kind of help out. Any person that's looking at me, I'll try to just latch on to yeah. like a light preserver. Now, when yeah. you're in situations like that, do you feel your? Do you feel like uh, more uh, anxious, or is it like I'm just this is a steady hand, no matter what the venue is. There're gonna be pagans yeah. there. There're gonna be senators there. They're going to be your, you know, old, old timers houses. It's going to be a, a school. Yeah. It's going to be the same performance from you. Pretty much. I mean, I'm going to live or die with, with what I've picked out that I want to say. Okay. And, uh, um, and, and I will, I mean, I'll privately, you know, seethe over, you know, a, a, a poor environment. Um, but, uh, you know, I can't really. I mean, you can change some of it, you know, if, if people don't do a good enough job calming the crowd down or, or you know, killing lights that should be killed or, mm-hmm. you know, some of that basic blocking and tackling stuff. I think you can, uh, you can, you can fix that, you know, 
hopefully even before you go up. <laughs> but um, but if it's up, you know, if you're already up there and things are going, you know, kind of sideways, uh, I'll I admit I don't have a very good uh, real time repair skill for uh, for for fixing that stuff. And and uh, uh, I'm either gonna get them with the material or or I'll die. Okay. Okay, well, let's talk about the material then, because I think you, mm -hmm. you are a strong writer and a strong performer. I don't, I don't Thanks. care about the other thing. <laughs> um, uh, so let's talk about the IKEA joke, and I want to kind of, if you can kind of marry in or weave in your writing routine. So I smell a hit. <laughs> IKEA has been in the news a lot lately. You know, some good, some not so good. Um, yeah, I mean, the good news is, uh, for all their family-minded employees, uh, IKEA is offering three months of paid parental leave to all their employees. That's six weeks to bond with a newborn and six weeks to assemble the crib. <laughs> Now, on the flip side, Ikea was ordered to pay $50 million to the families of three toddlers who had dressers fall on them. I saw $50 million. Now I kind of want to have kids. Who you are, but I love you, man. Uh, Tell me about where that idea came from, as far as um, the the maternity leave, the lawsuit. Where did are, are they real? Are they made up? Tell me where you're where no, you were. Real. Um, okay. And again, it, it's uh, sometimes I talk to other people about writing jokes every day that are that are topical and news driven and and. And again, the, the, the shelf life for most of that stuff is, is not long. Um, but uh, in this particular case, uh, the thing about the, you know, the parental leave for, for IKEA employees is real. The fact that they had to pay out a huge you know, eight-figure settlement to, to families for, for dressers falling on their kids mm -hmm. uh, is real. And, and, and then there's a part of that that I don't think was in the you know the clip that I sent about the founder of IKEA dying which is the part that I use more often now and don't emphasize as much the um, you know the lawsuit or the or the parental leave thing uh, again because you know people you know hearing about dressers falling on IKEA <laughs> <laughs> the audience loved it I loved it the audience was going nuts but so you that were just sitting in, crowd. so you were just Sorry. sitting on the couch in front of your television and this news article this news story comes up two different times no, I was doing uh, I, what I usually do in, in, in the mornings this was like 2017 I think that was from so um, yeah I was just scrolling through news articles and, and you know saw the lawsuit thing I think the the parental leave was just a positive. PR release that that somehow found its way onto my radar and, okay. and and I don't know I just have always found you know IKEA funny uh, oh. and so you know you just you know it, it's always going to be about the frustrations of building the furniture and it, you know how you can tie it back to the frustrations of uh, building the furniture and and uh, and the parental parental leave thing was just you know kind of felt like a layup and um, but then the lawsuit happened and and again it was you know okay how how is this funny and it's like you know it could be funny if you want money more than you want kids. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me so you said you, uh, you mentioned you know this is what i usually do in the morning what is it that you yeah. usually do in the morning pertaining to writing jokes or developing a joke whatever that looks like well it's for the for the website the the, the 10 topical jokes most every weekday unless i've mm -hmm. got something going <laughs> um, I'll just uh, look at a news aggregator like Google News or Apple News or um, CNN or poof, uh, Huffington Post or TechCrunch or CNET and, and, and just bop around from place to place and, and see how, you know, see if there's a story out there and, and, um, and you know, and, and what punchlines, you know, come to mind, uh, you know, to 
put it out. So, so, so you're in front of your computer. Is that where yeah. you are right now? Is this where you write jokes? Yeah. We're talking to yeah, you right now. This is where I'd be sitting in the morning and, and uh, having coffee and, this is cool. and look at new sites and you know and and doing my you know trying to just get ten jokes out. I mean, it's not like I come up with twenty and publish ten. It's like I get to ten and then I'm done. <laughs> and, and then it's <laughs> like an OCD thing. You have to do ten, or is it like if I just figure out six, I'm good with six? No, it's got to be it's got to be ten just because okay. it's. It, just to make yourself work a little harder because, you know, it would be easy doing, I mean, I could do five, you know, pretty readily. I mean, the, the, the marginal effort to get from the first few to, to the, to the 10th one is, is, is substantive. I but, mean, it, you know, you, you've got to kind of pour over some stuff and then, you know, just put a premise down and then, you know, maybe you'll find something that you think could be worked into something funnier. And so that goes out the window, but sometimes you're just scraping to get, um, you know, to get 10 stories. So, you know? and, and sometimes you can get like three or four punchlines off of a single uh, news article, but I tend not to, to, to want to do that. I t tend to want to take the best one and, and, and put that out there. But sometimes I'll do like a little sub bullet um, with a different joke. Okay. So now do you have, so you, you will sit there and no matter how long it takes, whether it's 20 minutes, whether it's two hours, you will work out 10 jokes. Okay. Yep. Um, now, um, are, is this, is this how your, is your act? I know you do the, you do the website and you do social media with these jokes. Is your act becoming these current news topic events? Are you shying more away from the life experience stuff and more no, now it's being, I, um... it's mostly now current events being peppered into the older experience jokes? Uh, how much are you talking about real life now? I guess in, in some ways, like um, like a, there's a there's a current events joke um, that that I'm actually you know using pretty frequently about a kid who called nine one one because his bus driver was drunk, <laughs> and um and and they did they they tracked down the bus driver and and gave her breathalyzer and and was drunk and and so I just made up the punchline that they asked the kid why he didn't call from the bus, he said I'm not walking home so. Uh, <laughs> So that's a, I mean, when you have a new story like that, that mm -hmm. isn't sort of tied to a specific celebrity or a certain point in time, mm -hmm. then you can kind of take it and, and, and make it, you know, live with you for, for quite a long time. Um, and again, nobody knows when the Ikea founder died, you know, it could have been yesterday for all anybody knows. <laughs> you know, so that, uh, that. You know, it just, if I'm doing this every day, then occasionally there are some things that I'm able to take and and um, and, and put into a you know to a to a stage set. Okay. Um, but I don't tend to lean on that stuff as as uh, um, you know cornerstone material for for stage stuff. So, um, I was going to say. Oh, sorry. oh, sorry. I was I was going to say then. So. Are, when you're scaring, is everything getting written in your notebook and then like from the notebook, the 10 jokes with the site or is, what, what goes in the notebook now or, and what goes, are you typing on the computer? Like what's, how do you differentiate yeah. between the two now? There, there are two very discrete processes. The, the stuff I write for the, um, for the, for the blog, uh, gets written right to, um, a WordPress editor, uh, and then gets published and, and never sees, um, a notebook until or unless I think that there's a joke that I can, you know, then it might find its way into an open mic set list and, and then I'll sort of dick around with it um, a little bit more to, to see if it can uh, take up a little more time or be uh, expanded upon. Jokes that are written, you know, that, that aren't for the blog, um, what seems to happen now is I'll, um, I'll, I'll just type in a little blurb of an idea on the phone and then, um, you know, maybe just a, a two or three sentence summary uh, to go with that in a notes app on the phone. And then from there, um, I, I start to do more longhand monkeying around with it. Do you work out jokes on stage or are they pretty much at least somewhat written and then it's somewhat not verbatim, but it's more what's on the page or do you ever work out material on the stage and like the Ikea yeah, does I that work out? I work out material on the stage because I don't have enough of a uh, real time sort of the improvisational 
uh, ability uh, to to embellish and and do things with it. Um, it's it's really more pre crafted and 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 see how it goes and then go back and and rewrite it and, and you know try it again that other way. So with the IKEA joke, you're looking you're looking on the, you're at your computer, you're reading your news. It comes out on one of your news um, sites, and you're yeah. like, this is this is good. Now, are you like? Are you like I'm gonna put this on highchrisdolan.com, or you're like this is too fucking good. I want to. I, this is gonna be stand up. If you're gonna see me live, you're only gonna hear this joke live, not on my website. Or is it one or the other, or is it always both? It's generally both. Okay. Um, uh, with a possible posting to social media like Facebook or Twitter to see if people kind of respond to it um, in, in in that context too. That's that's. That's been a you know a hit or miss sort of trial balloon you know to see if people you know like a joke. Do you work out jokes with Aaron? Online. What's that? Do you work out jokes on Aaron or is she not interested? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Um, and uh, and and if uh, if the if the punchline doesn't sort of hit right away or or, or is a little bit too dodgy, um, then you know it's like okay, I gotta. I, I got to get to the point a little bit quicker. I've got to sort of rephrase it in a way that makes it a bit more uh, comfortable. Okay. Easy, you know, for people to to, to get. So I know, I know we talked about was there material you wouldn't touch? You said not really. You try to shy away from political jokes because they're maybe too overdone. But are you do you just just are you purposely purposely seeking out kind of non-offensive jokes, Ikea owner dying, or like the one that I, the one I sent you, the one I love that you just did this week was the um, Arizona school delay, um, or, the, or, oh, yeah. or last week, uh, or, 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 or will you make a jo- joke about jo- George Floyd? Will you make a joke about immigration or coronavirus? Will these be, I mean, maybe, you know, your lighthearted approach, but will you touch dark subjects with the, then sprinkle the crystal and humor on top of it? Not George Floyd or, or, or you know something like that. I, I just I don't have the skill. Um, coronavirus, I, I I will, but probably uh, just kind of how it's you know impacted me and, and and what I've done, or more realistically, what I haven't done <laughs> um, uh, to you know and, and and that kind of thing is relatable. Uh, to other people as well. I mean, uh, so that I'd probably do, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't. Uh, I don't know that I have the. Maybe I do, but I just am scared. Um, you know the the capability to handle it in a way that's that's funny and uh, you know insightful or rewarding for anybody to hear. I uh, you, you mentioned I scared, but. I- I would say that you do take risks when you tell jokes on stage. You not do you not think that you do that? I tend to think I don't, but I like. What do you think is a risky well, joke? Well, I you know I would say like um, the joke you do about your cell phone. You know, it, it is, I gave my cell phone. Oh, now someone else yeah. is looking. I don't. Want, I don't want to give the. Pun, I'm not going to do the punchline justice. If you the the you know there's a it's not it's not offensive. It's not vulgar. It's just. It's just with your I mean, with your brand, I would say the punchline of that joke is kind of like I mean it's hilarious, but it's like does that mm-hmm. fit the Chris Dolan brand? Now knowing a little more about you, I would say that, that I, I see it a little more. But yeah. I would say you take those kind of risks on stage, or you yeah yeah that um, uh, okay. I mean that 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 that's a, that's a good example. Um, I mean one, there's such a lowbrow element to it that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that I think hedges what <laughs> you know and, and, and two it, it makes me out to be the, the, the dope <laughs> which is what I love about it I mean if, if I can be you know the you know the everyone can have a good laugh at, at, at my expense then then that's that's the best so okay. yeah so so I Maybe the the risk is worth it because it's a it's a joke at my expense. Um, so, so going back to IKEA, so you're so you you so you wrote the joke down. The joke was on your website. Joke is also in your in your notebook. I, I've seen I, I see you have the you have the uh, like the I call it like the newspaper boy satchel thing. 
I don't know what's yeah. in there. What is in that satchel you carry around? Because your notebook is the size of this thing. So what else is in yeah. the satchel? Several notebooks. Okay. Like um, a lot of notebooks and set lists and, and things to, to leaf through and, and remind me of uh, sequences of jokes and, and uh, like old jokes that I've written and, and tried once and forgotten about. And, and uh, I mean, when you write for, I mean, that's the, I mean, that, that was a Gary Goleman tip too. Mm -hmm. It's like to, to go back through your old notebooks and, and, and find some yeah. stuff that you've given up on. And, and that's it, a, it's a, it's like finding a shirt in your closet that, you know, you forgot your hat and you're really excited about wearing it. <laughs> you know, you write long enough, you can go back and find something that, um, you know, you didn't, uh, um, like the, the, the follow-up to the, to the smartphone joke, mm -hmm. you know, the, the speech to text thing that, um, that was, um, that was told and forgotten about. And, uh, I was sitting in the Cappuccino gelato thing um, down the block from Helium and leafing through an old notebook and and found that and, and you know was able to tack that on. And okay. So yeah, it's just a it's just a bunch of notebooks, a, a smartphone tripod, a um, bunch of pens. Um, Is the satchel more a comfort blanket? Like all my materials in here. I know if for some reason. Someone comes up to me and says, I need, I need a basketball joke. I can just go through every joke I have for a basketball joke. Or is it like I bring all this with me because my set could change at the very last second. I need to maybe reference back to an older joke. Yeah, it's probably the latter. I mean, uh, I don't know that I'm, I'm too good at sort of uh, going back through the catalog and, and getting specific subject for anyone you know okay. like I, I don't know I, I probably find a basketball joke I know you just threw that out there as a <laughs> random example yeah. but um uh but it but it's more that um you know if uh you know if you show up to do 10 and you get 15 you know what do you want to um what do you want to do with the extra time or or more likely if you you know think you have x and you have less than and you get less than x mm -hmm. then you know what do you want to um, so it's, it's more a comfort thing. I mean, uh, you know, I have, I have all my old notebooks <laughs> and, <laughs> and all the junk in there to, to, to look back on. And, 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 and plus, I mean, I, I'll keep going back to this. I, I don't have a, I don't have a good enough memory, uh, for my own inventory of things. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll forget about a joke that I told two weeks ago, honestly. And, and, if I don't go back and, and, and look at an open mic set list um, or find it, you know, in, a, in another spot, um, uh, you know, who knows, I could, I could lose it. I actually made an attempt to try and do like a, um, a, a primitive database of, of jokes with, with kind of grades that I assigned each one and about how long it took to tell them. Um, and, and it's a project that I should, you know, if, if I'm not going to do it now, I don't know that I'm ever going <laughs> to. I do the same thing. I do. I literally do the same thing. So, but I, I, I should do more times. But I rate my jokes as far as like, yeah. did this do well? And then I kind of like by average, yeah. if I have like an important show coming up, I'll be like, let me go back to my last like X number of sets on average. Which right. ones are the really good ones? Okay, well, I'm glad I'm the one that does that. Um, so with the IKEA joke, you see it, you write it down. Um, how important is it for you to work that out in an open mic? Or could you be like, this is gold, forget the open mic, I'm going to go right to a stage and just tell this? No, it's, I, uh, um, it, it's, it goes back to the, to the um, self-effacing stuff about writing for contests. Like I would, you know, I used to think that I had a good enough, um, uh, I used to think I was good enough at, at, at knowing what people would find funny you know, to say, okay, this is going to be five minutes and I'm going to save this joke and I'm not going to tell it in front of a crowd until, you know, this stupid contest and that would be. And, <laughs> and, and, and so, yeah, everything gets, gets worked out, um, before, uh, in fact, if I have a pet peeve, it's, it's, it's that people will go on to paid shows, uh, with the idea that they're going to do like new stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and, and if it doesn't go well, that, that that just irks me for some reason. No, I yeah, because you're you're you know it's it it, it brings down the quality of show if somebody is just like I'm going to dick around with yeah. this stuff. 
So, right. I get it. I'm on the same page. I um, So, does the Ikea joke come into an open mic setting with a list of other jokes that you've written recently as far as current events or what you see on the news? And then the Ikea joke emerges as now this is show ready? Or is it, I've identified the Ikea joke as special. I'm going to work on this one to get it show ready. Yeah, I think it's the latter. It, it's uh, I don't know with certainty what people will find funny, but I know, you know, what people will have found funny, you know, because they might, you know, they've seen it on Facebook or they've seen it in the, you know, my underperforming Twitter feed. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, so I'll, I'll try it in an open mind. I tend not to go with everything new um, in an open mic set. Um, I, I tend to kind of test new things, you know, ones, twos, threes at a time and, okay. and, uh, and then surround that with other stuff that, you know, that I've been doing, you know, which could benefit from the repetition or mm-hmm. maybe just a little bit of, uh, juggling around. How, how did you know the Ikea joke was ready for a, like a show, like a paid show? How, what, what was like, it's time to get this out there. Just open my success. Okay. I mean, just, you know. Just a couple or three times um, uh, telling it um, and where I would tell it, um, you know, if you, you know, start off by telling it and, and it does pretty well, um, that's good. Um, that's always good if, if you can start out um, with something brand new and it, and it pulls uh, better than you expected. That's, that's, that's worthwhile. Okay. <clears throat> Now, tell me what happens after the show is over concerning the Ikea joke. Did you record it? Do you watch it? Do you edit? Tell me where it started out to where we just saw this clip. Like, how much different is it, and how did you make it that different if it was different? Yeah, I don't really know that in that particular instance, Mm -hmm. I don't know that it was all that much different because one of the the neat things about writing – for the for the web or the blog is is you're already forcing a pretty uh, rigid economy of words uh, onto yourself for that medium. So you know you don't want to like a mon- they're really monologue jokes, I guess, mm-hmm. if you wanted to categorize them. So you don't want them to be longer than like three lines. I mean, you know, they got to be pretty quick. Mm-hmm. So they're already um, you know based on that brevity. Uh, pretty stage ready. I mean, if anything, you take a joke and, and, and sort of add other elements to it once you have the, you know, the, the foundational premise and, uh, and punchline and, and, and then, you know, the, you know, maybe it started with the parental leave thing and, and, and then the, you know, because these news items didn't all happen like on the same day, mm-hmm. you know, they all just kind of, you know, we're, we're, able to be made funny um, yeah. uh, independently. So, you know, it's that, that's, there's a little bit of luck in that too, you know, that you can kind of get a, a chunk or a quasi chunk of, of uh, out, out of, you know, three different news stories that happen to be about the same um, Subject. company that one has the exact same frustration with. <laughs> No, I mean, it's, 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 it's definitely a great joke. So is the Ikea joke done or will you go back and be like, is there something, or I mean, let's say barring any more news about Ikea, will you revisit mm-hmm. the joke again late, months later and be like, is there more I can do with this? Can I cut out more? Is there, or is it when, what we saw in that clip, is that you, is that your rubber stamp approval and it's going to be like that a year from now, two years from now, or will you go back and revisit that joke to make, to do anything more with it? No, I don't think that there's really any that one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's you know that that clip is you know a couple years old now, and uh, so uh, yeah, there's really not much more to um, you know to do with that. And then the other clip I sent you of the joke about you know trying, mm-hmm. you know I uh, you know worked that joke out for you know for years, and and you know just kind of thrown some. Uh, depending on how much time I have, I mean, there are some things that will either be in that joke or, you know, out of that joke. It, it, it's weird that people will want to volunteer that information. It's weird that people will want to ask about that information. And it's weird that, that 
between the, the volunteering and the asking, someone has come up with a way to say it yeah. and, and, and sort of broach the subject without um, getting too, uh, you know, graphic about it. And, and I guess it's, it's all those things. Now, if I was watching you at, at a party and I'm sitting there watching you and someone talks about try, do you whip out a notebook and write down trying equals fucking or, or do you, or yeah. do you just store it in your head and you wait till you get home and write it down? Tell me how you capture these in the moment kind of jokes. I think it's, they're probably from times where um, I'm not in a situation to really be able to capture it. And so you either have to sort of rely on the fact that it's going to come up again in, you know, it, it's just a good enough memory mm -hmm. that it's going to stay with you until you can get to, to where you record it. Because, you know, you, you'll have this happen, you know, to you, you know, you'll think of something and, and, and then it'll just sort of vanish. And, mm -hmm. and, and if it comes, up again um, in in the forefront of your mind, then that's kind of a way of, of, of telling yourself that this you know merits being looked at or, or, or written about uh, a little bit more. So um, I was going to say, do do you? Um, so the trying joke is not written down. Trying joke was something that is in your head. You've worked it out in your head. You've edited it in your head, and you've only performed it on stage. It's not in written form. No. At all. No, that's not no. What I'm what I'm saying oh. is is someone would talk about trying, um, okay. and I wasn't able to write it down then, but I mm -hmm. definitely you know thought about it again uh, and wrote it down okay. and started um, uh, just to, to to flesh it out, um, and uh, and then you you kind of you know get at you know like like the the the, the what do you call it? The, well, there's so many tags on that joke. The can I try yeah, at the yeah, end is just, yeah, it's the perfect cherry to that joke. Yeah, and, and it's those things that it's like, okay, well, what, you know, what, uh, you know, how else can I just sort of monkey around with a word yeah. to, 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 to add to it? So, yeah, that one took a, yeah, that one took a lot. So, I it's mean, very, it's a, the first time you've told that joke to when I, you sent me this, this clip, that, it's very different from that first iteration. Okay. Yeah, it, I think that it, it's very different because it would have been a lot, um, you know, shorter. Okay. Like, uh, you know, I, I, it, I'm going from, you know, from distant memory, but it's like, you know, just sort of calling out the fact that trying is a euphemism for, um, for fucking. Okay. Um, and, and that was, you know, probably about as, as much as I had, yeah. you know, and, and like, okay, well, let's go back and, and sort of go at the word on a, on a fairly, you know, pedantic way and, and just sort of hammer away. Yeah. So, so at that, so it's, it's, uh, I apologize if this is redundant from my question you asked before, but have jokes like that gone by the wayside because now your writing routine is new sites and writing it down or will, if this funny experience happens, you'll, you'll put aside the news or maybe add on to when you're done with your 10 news stars and write that joke out. How does a joke like that get worked out in addition to the news yeah. or, or instead of the news? No, they're, they're, they're parallel processes. Okay. I, mean, it, it, so I know that I'm going to write, you know, out of habit, you know, the, the, the 10 topical jokes and, mm -hmm. and, you know, out of the, you know, 50 that I write, you know, for a given week, probably a fraction of one. Uh, you know, has a possibility of coming out and 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 being a uh, a stage joke. But at the same time, what I'll do, you know, is make little notes in my phone about stuff and observations uh, and musings that have nothing to do with um, with the blog. And then those will come in the sort of be revisited, you know, at a different time but not during you know the time that i'm writing for the blog okay so i i noticed there's been a general theme of the jokes that i know and, and the trying joke is one of them and uh your friends and and the haters and and the ikea joke <laughs> there's a general dislike of kids like it's almost like a putting down <laughs> of kids is that an accurate are, are you uncomfortable around children is that is that where these come from kind of thing or is it like what is the 
what is there, there's very few or of any Chris Dolan jokes where kids are held in a positive light or where good things are happening <laughs> to kids. <laughs> I can't really think of one. <laughs> Except for the kid on the on the school bus. I mean, that, he's a he's a little hero. But uh, it, it's um, I I just it, the thought never crossed my mind to to be a parent because as as I say, I I, I knew that I wouldn't. Be any good at it, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and and so yeah, and 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 I kind of stumbled into this, uh, um, you know, not so well guarded secret that that parents get frustrated, and and if there's a group that don't mind being, you know, sort of picked on. Mm-hmm. Uh, their frustrations it's it's put upon parents yeah. i mean because uh, you know whenever i bring up you know jokes that kind of you know there's there's one about the drive like your kid lives here yeah um and i said i don't have kids but if i did there'd be days when i want to run them over <laughs> and parents love that they really like that and and and, uh, and they're like yeah i'll say i mean you know they'll they'll really just sort of you know climb on on board there so it's, it's, I mean, I have a bazillion nieces and nephews, and, and, mm-hmm. and I'm crazy about them all. Uh, I just, you know, never thought I'd be any good at, at, at being a parent, and, and I think, you know, the, the jokes kind of point to, um, you know, the reasons why. So <clears throat> let me ask you this, and I apologize if it's out of line, you don't have to answer it. Is the reason yeah. for the no kids because of your own childhood being, is it a way, like, to protect? No. So, okay. No, uh, I was just, okay. No, not the wrong at, at, at all. Okay. Um, I was just curious. Yeah. Um, is there, we talked about you have, you write jokes and notebooks on your phone. Do you have a filing system to your jokes at all? Is there an organization to them or just chronological from when it was hit pen to paper? No, just, uh, the, the closest thing I have to a filing system is, uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll date the, um, you know, the audio recordings that I do. Um, and, uh, and I also will date, um, the open mic set list that accompanies that audio recording. So if I look at my phone and I don't necessarily know or remember what I did, mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, I can go back and, and, and look at the set list. And, and uh, but there's a neat little Android feature for the um, for the Google Recorder now that will uh, not not a verbatim one, but a pretty good transcription of what you just said. Okay. So, uh, what is no, that? You know, is, is the Google Google Recorder that the app on the Android? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Cool. I think um, it only really works on pi- Pixels though. But, uh, oh, Google Pixels. Uh, okay. My wife yeah. has one of those. I do not. Um, yeah. uh, so what is the what is the goal with the depth of your material? And you can say for both your stand up and for your blog. Like, what's the next achievable step? I'm not talking about like I'm not talking about like twenty years down the road. Something like. Is there, are you going to record something with it? Or are you just trying to like, I'm just want to get the best hour and then have that hour? Or what, what is the, what is the next step that you have set for yourself for stand up and then with your, with your blog? Well, for stand up, I mean, I, I don't know if it's realistic to think about an album or a, you know, anything like that. I, I just, I just want to keep adding to what I already have. Um, uh, and What do I want to say? Like, uh, I like, again, I like putting on my own shows because it makes me um, not have the same stuff that I did at this particular venue, you know, three Mm -hmm. or four months ago, uh, as I am going to do three or four months from now. Okay. Um, So so having variety, I think, is the... uh, is the real goal and, 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 and having a, um, a solid repertoire and, and, you know, and not getting too stale and, and, um, and for the blog stuff, I mean, it's, uh, it was originally started, uh, to submit monologue jokes and, uh, and desk bits, um, for late night, um, TV talk shows. And, and I don't know that that's going to happen to a 57 year old. I didn't say that. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, Are you submitting uh, them? Have you been submitting to like SNL or no, not, not, not recently? Because I, I I don't really know. I mean, I did in the past, but I but I don't really know uh, to whom or, or, or for whom. Um, now I need to better research that. But uh, 
I know Rick Adana has done that. I don't know if he's a good resource yeah, to use. Yeah, update and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. He, he might um, be a good uh, person to ask if I ever, you know, see him again. Who knows yeah. what else? <laughs> but um, uh, so so it's it was done with that in mind. But I mean, if it was, um, you know, I'd be happy just submitting it freelance to, you know, to to people that that wanted to use them. And 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 I was recording like a like a weekend update ish. Um, yeah. You know, you. I really like those with Ralston. I really like that, and then it just disappeared yeah. with the John Ralston show. I like those, and yeah. I know you said it was too much for the graphics and stuff. What that? I said, I remember you tell, I asked you why it stopped because I really liked them. And you're like, because he didn't want to deal with the graphics or something like that. Or it was yeah, too much work on his a, end. A bit of a disagreement over <laughs> um, how much, you know, added value. Yeah, never mind. But uh, <laughs> well, then, I started to, then I started to do them on my own um, mm -hmm. and, and, and got like a, a nice graphical introduction and, and, and bumpers in between the stories. And, and, uh, and I just kind of quit on it because it wasn't really getting a lot of views. So uh, I've been getting some feedback from some people about how to make it better. And so uh, I could always revisit that and, and put those out on the YouTube channel. And, you know, just again, you know, for the satisfaction of having done it the same way I have it for the satisfaction of doing it and writing and writing and writing and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, having it form a habit. Okay. Thanks. Um, that's it for me. I want to talk about stuff to promote you a little bit for, I don't know who, how people will be watching these, but, um, we talked a lot about highcrystal.com. You said it was a three, this is a three year blog project. Yep. Um, yep. so what is, tell me a little bit about, so you talk, we talked a lot about the jokes that came in on there. You, you write 10 jokes a day. Are there, are, you said, and there's just 10, you said you write for the day in advance. I'm trying to work this out in my head too. Um, yep. this, is this a blog that you do for yourself and it doesn't matter you have one, one reader or a million readers, or will you do jokes on there that you think will have more mass appeal or you do, this is stuff that makes me laugh. I'm going to put this out there. No, this is stuff that makes me laugh because I read a news story about it and here's a, and here's a take on it. And, um, that's, that's as simple as it is. And, uh, it's not specifically to write for, uh, you know, a, you know, a specific type of person uh, to read it out loud. It's it's as though I'm, you know, the one that's gonna and have uh, read it out loud. Do you do you um, keep track of hits? Does your does your thing have like? Yeah, and, yeah, and, I can think, and 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 there are days that nobody comes. <laughs> 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 well, what do you what what do you do to like? I mean, because like I know when I've brought you up on shows, you don't go. Oh, by the way, mention highcrystal.com. You pretty much just say like yeah. John. De you know, I'm a John DeBella comedy winner, which is a great accolade, or LOL, the grand runner up, which is a great accolade. But you do, should you like what are things you do to push the blog more to kind of get because it is hilarious. The stuff the stuff that you put on Facebook, I guess, is like your favorite joke of the 10 because you don't put all 10 jokes yeah. on Facebook yeah I mean some I mean some of the ones that are, are, are my favorites sometimes I put ones that I think are like third or fourth best you know in order to you know get people to maybe you know click over and and, and, and see what else is there but yeah that's you know it, it's one of the favorites you know or two of the favorites or three of the favorites on a given day that I'll um, that, that I'll push over there and which is fun which again leads me because it'll be my favorite of the day and mm -hmm. nobody will like it oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes I, so I don't know what people find funny you know and that's why you got to keep trying stuff out well that's the thing because it's it's you know facebook has the algorithm so you don't know who actually sees them i think i see them more often because i like them more but i think if you have people who don't like maybe the first few it falls out of their content so like is do yeah. you do you advertise highchrisdolan.com on no, other things? No, I need to. I, I should probably just like assign a small budget and, mm -hmm. and, and you know get some sponsored posts out there and and see what sort of traction it it, it, it builds um, to get some people that I don't know because I because I don't have a real expansive Facebook friends list. I mean, I, I tend to only accept invites from people who I who I know, mm -hmm. you know, or or have met. And, and so then it becomes rather limiting. Um, you know, you'll get the occasional uh, anonymous, you know, person, you know, who, who I don't, you know, Twitter followers are more anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I'll get some uh, traction from there. But yeah, I think the only way to overcome that is, is either by, 
you know, begging people to <clears throat> share it, which I don't like mm -hmm. doing, um, or, you know, paying for, you know, for clicks and, and, and see if it's manageable and sustainable. It, which... it is a great, it is a great website. I will Thanks. recommend anybody go out there and see it. I'm, uh, I was, I, I had a thought and then it left and I can't, uh, I can't remember what it was anymore, but, uh, let's talk about suburban comedy, suburban spelled mm -hmm. S-U-B, well, it's, it's suburban with bourbon spelled like the alcohol drink, because it's in... Yep. It's in a country club or it's in a it's in a distillery. It's at two different places right now. Okay. We have um, we have shows at Worcester Golf Club, okay. which is a nine hole golf course, and that's where we started out. And then we were also doing shows at Brothers Kirshner Brewing at okay. uh, Route seventy three in Skipack. Um, so Worcester Golf Club in like the Worcester Collegeville area, mm -hmm. and then Brothers Kirshner Brewing in Skipack and. Uh, we had a show with David James in February and Brandon Vincent Jackson, and that was, I mean, our 2020 kickoff. And, and, and then we had, uh, oh my gosh, we had uh, Anthony DeVito yeah. um, lined up for March. Um, we kind of fell into that after a couple guys um, took it and, and, uh, and, and couldn't do it anymore except in other gigs. Uh, and then a woman... Uh, Caitlin Palufo, who I worked with on a showcase at Helium back at the end of 2018, mm -hmm. I think, um, and, and got in touch with her, and she was scheduled to come in in April. Um, and the last show we had at Worcester was uh, Alinga Mitra, who was on last yes. comic stand. We talked about and, this because I loved yeah. Alingdon was. I'm surprised he got like voted like most. If I can remember correctly, like most downloaded or most internet watched one, but he never made it into the yep. quote unquote house, which was, I think it was the fact that he was good enough to make it in, but he was too new. He didn't have like an agent to get him in. I feel like most of oh, people really? get in there because they have an agent that works for C or NBC or something like that. Um, oh, but a LinkedIn was great. very, very good. Uh, Jeez, comic. good. I would love and to so see him. Has, I haven't seen him since he was on last coming. So I would love to have seen him X yeah. number of years later, 10 years later kind of deal. Um, yeah, terrific. So, so uh, when do you when would you be comfortable bringing back suburban comedy? Would it have to be vaccine, or would it, could it be just a fall off of deaths or fall yeah, off? Yeah, I think it would. I think it would have to be you know uh, sort of a when when people were comfortable coming back indoors, you know, for 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 shows. So, uh, you know, it could be you know late autumn, you know, or or, or into the winter. Mm -hmm. Um, I think post vaccine would probably be ideal, but, um, but for me, that was, you know, that would be it. You know, my friend Lance, Michael yeah. Lancer, how he, he runs the, you know, the shows too. Uh, and a guy, Jeff, o Jeff Oaks, mm -hmm. um, helped run the shows now too. And, you know, it would just be kind of a case where the, there'd need to be consensus on, uh, wanting to do another one and, uh, and lining up the talent and, <clears throat> and making sure it's, you know, just a great show. Okay. Which you do great shows, oh, and I funny. want to do really good shows too. D does the suburban comedy have a Facebook page or a page that people can like? That I can put like in the show notes for this. Yeah, suburban comedy is on Facebook. We don't have a website. We've got okay. a URL bought, but we don't have a website. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, if you go to suburban bourbon b o u r b o n suburban comedy on Facebook, like us there, and then you know people will be able to know about shows. Okay. Nice visiting with you. Well, yes. Yeah. This is a great. Concept. Well, dude, I, I appreciate you being as open as you were and for sharing as much as you did. I think sure. you were, I mean, this is exact, I, you know, I'm glad I waited a little bit. I was, I initially thought, let me do you first because of, I just think you're, you're just overall a great comic from, from, from the, the writing to the, the, the performing. And then also I know you, I've known you throughout my whole career doing it and you're just a nice guy. You're extremely humble, but you're also very like confident that you know in your material as well which i appreciate um it's, you know I, I i hate like i won't say but like comics you know we're good they're like ah this joke's not you know and so i i like that i appreciate it too so but i appreciate it very much chris and right. i will keep you abreast of this and uh thank All you right. again for being an open book and sharing you got it tell see her that's hi see you sir i appreciate it take care of yourself you see you bye all right now they're interview with chris dolan probably a heavy interview, a heavy interview for just the content and the amount of insight into joke writing. Um, I'm so happy that Chris said yes to do this. Uh, he was probably the first person I thought of actually when I decided to do this series. I was like, oh, let's get Chris. Um, so I'm happy he said yes to go ahead and, and do this. 
Um, again, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff happened on this one, so um, uh, I hope uh, I hope um, that everyone got something out of it and um, and saw a little bit of different side of Chris that I even knew about. So, but um, please go and check out his website, HiChrisDolan.com. Fantastic website, favorite it because each day you'll get new jokes that are just perfect. perfect. Uh, and uh, also subscribe to this channel so that uh, you can keep getting new content every Monday. Drop a comment. I will get back to you, I promise. And, uh, and uh, we'll see you next Monday. Take care.